Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ Live by downloading our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one followed by the words Spot Media. Amid reports of two suspected cases of leptospirosis-related deaths in Clarendon, a call is being made for the government to urgently tackle rat infestation in sections of the parish. Member of Parliament for Southwest Clarendon, Noel R. Scott, has cited poor garbage collection as the cause of the infestation. In a statement last night, Mr. Arscott said based on reports received, the garbage pileup in the parish is at the point of a public health emergency. He is calling for an immediate and thorough audit of the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Mr. Arscott wants the audit to determine whether the collection of garbage is being done on a partisan basis. Leptospirosis is a bacterial disease that affects humans and adults and animals. And in the wake of the leptospirosis scare in Clarendon, the NSWMA on Saturday conducted cleanup activities in Redlands, one of two communities with garbage collection challenges. Several trucks were deployed to collect garbage that had piled up. And we did quite a bit of work in the areas mentioned. And the main area is Redlands. And I even had words with the Member of Parliament as to what we are doing and what we intend to do. And because a one-off collection don't solve a solid waste problem. So Redland, that was not originally on any of our schedule for pickup. For some reason, it was just not in the zone for us to collect. Mr. Gordon also outlines plans to prevent further garbage pileups. Add it now as we have been adding as we go along in other areas where we find districts that were not on the list. We have added Redland and Redland is now officially a part of our collections. And so we will have a, um, uh, the ongoing collections in Redland and we shouldn't see this kind of accumulation there again. Persons who pay household workers minimum wage could end up forking out more money if a proposal to the National Minimum Wage Advisory Commission is accepted. The Jamaica Household Workers Union has requested that the minimum wage for domestic workers be increased from $6,200 to $7,500. It made the submission on Thursday at a final consultation meeting by the Minimum Wage Commission. President of the Jamaica Household Workers Union, Shirley Price, said the proposal is getting support. Because let other stakeholders were there asking for the same thing, including trade union uh, right across the board was asking for 75 for us also. It's support the trade union say whatever we ask for, they are in support of it. Also... The, the, the government, in, in terms of the, the um, Honorable Bob Green Ministry, she also asked for support. For whatever we ask for, they want to support it. Ms. Price believes that employers can afford the proposed increase. She does not expect household helpers to lose their jobs if the increase is granted. Let me tell you something. I take in, when we're looking at this figure, I, we take into consideration the employers and the employee, and we find a middle ground, and we think seven five hundred dollars is reasonable. The Jamaica Society for Industrial Security, JASIS, is urging female security guards who are facing sexual harassment to be fearless and report it. This follows a report by the Union of Clerical Administrative and Supervisory Employees, UKs, that female security guards are coming under pressure from sexual predators. According to President of UKs, Vincent Morrison, the guards are reluctant to file complaints due to fear of victimization. President of JCS, Commander George Overton, is encouraging female security guards to take legal action against persons who sexually harass them. To be reported, and the society, the association, has a, a, a zero tolerance approach to it. We do not condone that kind of conduct in um, in our operations. Um, women are a significant part of the guard force in the country, and we must treat them with respect. Um, any company, certainly, that I learn of that is behaving and condoning that kind of action, I will speak out against them. 
There's another pledge this afternoon to increase the number of females involved in representational politics. This time, it's from President of the People's National Party, Dr. Peter Phillips. Details from Simone Golding. Jamaica does not have enough women in politics, which he intends to change. He maintains that he will ensure that there are more female councillors, members of parliament and future prime ministers. The duty that we have is not just about expanding the numbers. Hear me. We have to create a new dispensation in the land to elevate the status, place, and role of our women in our society and in the country in a different way. Mr. Phillips explained one of the main reasons why more women are not in public representation. And one of those obstacles is that people have put argument to them that they don't want, cross lines which they don't approve, and put difficulties in front of them which are just plain wrong and not right. And it is up to us in our generations to remove those disabilities. He says women often experience challenges and barriers that men do not have to contend with. The PMP president added that Jamaica needs to remove those obstacles. Let us commit ourselves to advancing her mission and her accomplishments by building on them and building a better place for women in this land. Building a better Jamaica that works for all the people. Building a Jamaica where women don't have to carry three quarters of the burden. Building a Jamaica that works for all. He was speaking at the annual PMP Women's Movement Conference. Simone Golding reporting for TVJ News. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has given an update on the number of jobs that has been created in the business process outsourcing BPO sector. Speaking at a recent town hall meeting in St. Thomas, Mr. Holness said thousands of jobs have been created and much more are on the way. He says more jobs are coming, particularly for residents in Montego Bay. Between April last year and March this year, we have created 4,000 new jobs in the BPO sector. And that, those would mostly be jobs for young people. September coming with the Port Authority's development of, our, of new facilities in Montego Bay. 2,000 new jobs will be created. This is not if, but, or maybe. 2,000 new jobs will be created. The contract to build a new fire station in Yala St. Thomas is expected to be signed next month. The announcement was made by local government minister Desmond McKenzie at the town hall meeting in St. Thomas. And I am proud to announce that already the work have started to put together the necessary documentations, the drawings, so that in another two years, what has been your biggest cry will become a reality. In the meantime, Mr. McKenzie says $10 million will be spent to refurbish the Mount Bay Fire Station. The Mount Bay market will also be renovated at a cost of $20 million. Plans are also on stream to build a structure to house the Mount Bay Municipal Corporation. The Transport Ministry opened a new administrative office for the Island Traffic Authority in Maypen over the weekend. Portfolio Minister Mike Henry says the new building is part of the integrated multimodal transport system in Clarendon. He says the project cost a little over $26.2 million. Mr. Henry says the building was constructed by students from the Caribbean Maritime Institute as part of a partnership with the ministry. He adds that the students will receive certificates for their contribution to the project. The new Maypen ITA depot represents the power of collaboration and innovation. It represents a model for building innovation and developing ways to reuse materials to create a beautiful structure. Comfortable working and business space in a cost-effective way for just over $26.2 million. For me, that's value for money. 
defeating my, a first world country. Well, that facility you're looking at boasts two new two offices, an examination room, a reception area, a, 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 a filing room and a kitchenette external floodlights built by the CMI staff and students, a parking garage at the back for staff members, installation of lead panel lights to conserve energy, and the installation of air conditioning units to keep the staff and customers more relaxed in the work that they do. In news overseas, the Spanish police have arrested and charged 65 individuals over a continent widering that traded in horse meat for animals. More from the CNN retailer Tesco is asking after authorities said some patties from Tesco and four other supermarket chains in Ireland and the UK contain traces of horse and pig. Our investigation of the supplier will cover in great detail exactly what happened, who was responsible for it and just exactly how long this has been going on. Thank you Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister put the responsibility squarely on the supermarkets. But it is worth making the point that ultimately retailers have to be responsible for what they sell and where it has come from. Ireland's Food Safety Authority conducted the test two months ago and generally found trace elements of pork or horse meat in many of the samples. But in one of the beef patties supplied to Tesco, 29% of the meat content was in fact horse DNA. Irish food standard officials said of 27 burger patties tested, 10 had horse DNA and that 20 had pig DNA. A worry for those with religious food restrictions. And if you are from the Jewish or Muslim faith, that must be an absolutely horrific revelation. Tesco said there can only be two answers. One of them involves illegality uh, by suppliers or suppliers to those, those individual suppliers or gross negligence. One of the suppliers identified by Irish authorities is Liffey Meats. In a statement, Liffey said the horse DNA likely came from an approved EU raw meat plant who is supposed to only supply beef and stressed the products concerned represent no risk to human health. The other Irish supplier, Silvercrest, said it's launched a full-scale investigation into two continental European third-party suppliers. The investigation centers on if pig and horse DNA got into the burgers when non-meat ingredients, like what holds the meat together, was mixed in. And in sports, a national men's shot put record of 21.96 meters by Odain Richards and a 6 sub-11 second clocking by Elaine Thompson to win the women's 100 meters were the top performances by Jamaican athletes at the Diamond League meet in Morocco on Sunday. Details in this report. In 2015, world bronze medalist Odin Richards heaved the shot put to a new national record of 21.96 meters to hit top form with just 19 days to go to the IAAF World Championships in London. Richards is marked which placed second to American Ryan Cruiser's massive 22.43 meters at the Robert Diamond League meet on Sunday is the fifth farthest throw in the world this season and tied 27th all time in the event. Richards' previous national record was 21.69 seconds, done twice in 2015. Elaine Thompson clocked 10.87 seconds, her sixth sub-11 time this season, to win the 100 meters and extended her unbeaten streak to 14 in the Blue Ribbon event. Well, Thompson's got a good start right on the inside. Williams going well right from that lane one, but here comes... Uh, Talu, Talu on the near side and Thompson comes past her. Thompson wins, Talu in second place, a photograph for third and it's 10.87. Elsewhere on the track, Geneve Russell, who will miss the World Championships, finished strongly with 54.36 seconds for second in the women's 400 meter hurdles, won by world champion Susanna Heynova, who won with 52.22. National champion Ronda White finished eighth on her Diamond League debut in 56 seconds even. Novlin Williams-Mills with 51.18 
and Sharika Jackson, 51.20 seconds, ended fourth and fifth respectively in the 400 meters, won by the Bahamian Olympic champion, Shawnee Miller-Webo, who did a meet record 49.80 seconds. Rashid Dwa with 20.43 and Warren Weir, 20.48, were sixth and seventh respectively in the men's 200 meters, won by Canadian Olympic silver medalist Andre de Brass in a meet record 20.03 seconds. Two-time World Championship finalist Kimberly Williams cut the sand at 14.31 meters to take second in the triple jump, won by World and Olympic champion Catherine Ibarguin of Colombia in 14.41 meters. Reporting for TVJ Sports, I'm Keon Reyna. And with that, we end the midday news. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of our news, sports and production teams, good afternoon. Welcome, I'm Robin Kerno at the CNN Center. And this week marks six months on the job for US President Donald Trump, and he is trying to hit the reset button. But controversies are growing while his support among voters has dropped. Mr. Trump will be promoting his Made in America theme later today, but that could be overshadowed by the latest revelations in the Russia probe. Plus, a centerpiece of his campaign, the promise to get rid of Obamacare, is now in limbo. Well, Mr. Trump tries to focus on jobs. A new poll shows most Americans don't approve of the job he's doing. CNN's Joe Johns looks at how the president is fighting back. Congratulations, Mr. President. After nearly six months in office, President Donald Trump now facing the lowest approval rating in recent history. Just 36% approve of the president's performance in a new ABC News Washington Post poll, a 6% drop since the 100-day mark in April. The president attempting to spin these results, claiming that almost 40% is not bad, and asserting that the poll was inaccurate during the election. The poll also showing that 63% of Americans think that the meeting between Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, and Jared Kushner and a Russian lawyer to get dirt on Hillary Clinton was inappropriate. Most people would have taken that meeting. It's called opposition research. The president once again focusing on his former rival in a Sunday morning tweet while defending his son. Amid the latest revelations that at least eight people attended the meeting, including a Russian-American lobbyist who served in the Soviet military. This despite Trump Jr.'s insistence that all of the details about the meeting have been disclosed. I do not think there's anything else. We've scoured it thoroughly, just to be sure. He first said no such meeting ever happened. And then he said the meeting was about adoptions, and then he admitted the meeting was about getting information on Hillary Clinton, uh, and that he wasn't forthcoming about who was in the meeting. So we can't accept anything Don Jr. says. One of the president's personal lawyers also coming to Trump Jr.'s defense during a PR blitz on the Sunday shows. Donald Trump Jr. himself said things should have been done differently. Having said that again, none of that is violation of the law. That's more process. While raising a possible defense of the meeting. If this was nefarious, why did the Secret Service allow these people in? The Secret Service pushing back, noting in a statement Donald Trump Jr. was not a protectee of the USSS in June 2016. Thus, we would not have screened anyone he was meeting with at the time. Well, that was our Joe Johns reporting there. Well, for more, I want to bring in Dave and Fa David Farenthold. He's a CNN contributor and reporter, it's a prize winning reporter, I must say, for the Washington Post. Great to speak to you, David, there from. Uh, the Post's newsroom, we heard these new poll numbers. They're pretty bad, aren't they? Even though the president says they're not so bad. They are quite bad. As, you, as you, the reporter said, uh, this is one of the worst uh, approval ratings, not just for President Trump, but for any president in modern memory. And it's only come uh, six months into his tenure. Now, other presidents, uh, Bill Clinton notably, had low approval marks this early in their tenure. Uh, but the question for Donald Trump is, does he have the ability, does he have the, the, the skills to get himself out of this hole the way that Bill Clinton did? Uh, he hasn't really shown any signs of changing his behavior, Trump has. So it's hard to imagine him getting much better uh, unless something sort of unforeseen comes up. Yeah, I mean, I think Bill Clinton at, at the time when he had these kind of poll ratings landed up hiring David Gergen, for example, who's a, who's a CNN contributor. <laughs> 
Is there, this a sign then perhaps that Donald Trump could look to that as an example? Are we expecting some shakeups within the White House? I, I don't expect anything major. I mean, there may be people that come and go. Reince Priebus, who's the White House Chief of Staff, is perpetually rumored to be on the outs, but never actually out. Uh, the qu real question is, w will there be, if they do change people, will they change approach? Will there be anything about this White House that's different? Uh, and I don't see that. Donald Trump has, from the campaign to now, uh, sort of been the same person. He's the same kind of combative person with a only loose relationship with the truth. Uh, and when that, you know, there's been nothing about him so far that shows me he would change that. He hasn't changed. He's 70 years old. He's been a politician for more than two years. I don't see that changing. And many people shouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, his, his support though they knew that going in they knew what kind of a guy he was what he was bringing to the job that's why they liked him what do these numbers tell us specifically about Republican voters and also independents well President Trump has lost a lot of support among independents uh, he's done pretty well among Republicans he's still very high among Republican primary voters and that'll continue to affect Republican politics uh, President Trump has been extremely lucky in who he's gotten to run against. The vaunted field of Republican challengers he went after turned out to be none of them as good as we thought. Hillary Clinton turned out to be, as we what we knew she was, a pretty polarizing, widely disliked figure. Uh, and now President Trump is sort of running against a Democratic Party that's effectively leaderless. They haven't decided what their message is. They haven't decided who their leaders are. He's still doing uh, relatively well, I think, because he doesn't have anybody to sort of, for his opposition to unite behind. He's still kind of uh, facing a divided uh, Democratic Party. So he's lucky, and if the Democrats ever turn that around, he could be in big trouble. Yeah, and many people, many critics say, in fact, his, his, worst, uh, his worst opponent is his self here. A lot of these scandals and, uh, you know, are, are self-inflicted. With that in mind, what about the next six months? And, and particularly when it comes to this, this Russia investigation, he, he wants to change the topic, but will he? I mean, this is going to continue to overshadow the next six months. I don't think he has shown much of an ability to change it so far, and that's because uh, new information keeps coming out. I, I, three weeks ago, I would have said, well, there's a lot of smoke, but not any fire. There's not any concrete evidence that the, the Trump campaign knew they were colluding with Russians. And then Donald Trump Jr. releases a bunch of emails in which he has said, hey, basically, do you want to collude with Russians? And he says, I love it. Let's do it. Uh, and then all along the way, Trump Jr. had said, given sort of uh, half-truths or false statements about that meeting. And if that's any indication of what the next six months are going to be like, I think it's going to be worse for him. He's going to get w lower into the Russia morass rather than pulling himself out of it. And at the same time, we have this uh, special counsel investigation, Robert Mueller's investigation that's going on. We don't really know what they are producing. They aren't leaking very much. Um, so that also could be something that will probably only make things worse for Trump. If he had any sort of policy victories, anything that he could sort of distract people from, that might be a, a, a factor in his political rebound. But at this point, what we're seeing with tax reform and health care is that even within the Republican Party, the party is divided and Trump has not shown a great ability to unite them. Yeah, and I mean, I think the point is many people hoped he would get stuff done and, and that's not happening. And that could be uh, his biggest danger coming up, um, at least for the Republicans, coming up to the midterms. That's right. What President Trump sold himself as during the primary was a deal maker. This is somebody who knows how to get people together to make great deals. And he talked about doing that overseas with the, in the Middle East, but he also talked about doing it at home. What we've seen so far, at least on the health care bill, is that the deal making is done by others. That President Trump doesn't really know the subject well enough to kind of horse trade and bring people together uh, to agree on a health care bill. He's sort of thrown out tweets saying, you know, you guys should really get this together. But he hasn't done very much to try to actually bring people together in, to get in the nitty gritty of the bill itself. Tax reform is probably uh, another cha challenging subject that he's going to have to learn a lot about if he's going to horse trade there. So he sold himself on that deal making ability, but it hasn't really shown itself so far. David Farenholt there from the Washington Post newsroom. Thanks so much for joining us, giving us all of your analysis. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, the United Arab Emirates is coming out against a report that says it masterminded the hacking that triggered the Gulf's worst diplomatic crisis in decades. Now, four Gulf states cut ties with Qatar last month, if you remember, after an article on a Qatari state news quoted its emir praising Israel and Iran. Qatar says hackers inserted those quotes and it denies their major allegation that it sponsors terror. Well, the Washington Post reported Sunday that U.S. intelligence sources say the UAE held a meeting to plan that hack, but the UAE's top diplomat says that's flat out false. But I, the, the Washington story post is, uh, is not true, purely not true. That's what I will say, and I, I think you will see in the next few days that the Washington story uh, 